one, a long time, no see. This is going to be probably about 30 minutes, 30 minutes long. So get, get your questions in. Um, going to make this one. I really want to drive home the, uh, the concepts of agentic workflows, which don't, don't be afraid. That's an actual word to phrase uh, of GPT agents and stuff and show you a demo. Hopefully if it goes, goes well. So it should be pretty cool. So this will be a good session, a quick one. But yeah, we're going to talk uh, chat GPT, perplexity, and agent GPT. And we'll start off. I'll drop this video in the chat too. It's a really good one to, to give you some background information. And I'm going to use chat GPT to help, uh, to help teach this as well, actually. Teach. Basically share. I don't think I'm a teacher uh, for, for these concepts, but sharing. This video is really good. Andrew uh, Ng is a, I think, didn't he like start Coursera or something? Uh, really smart guy, does machine learning AI for a long time. But let's just ask, actually, let's start off by asking, yeah, GPT, what is agentic workflow? Again, we're going to dumb this down, make it really, really easy. Don't worry. And here's GPT. Give me two types of things here. Maybe I should tell it, I should tell it within AI. In AI, or does it even know about what it's going to be replaced by? No. Not replaced by, but made more efficient with. It's going to be using GPT, multiple GPTs to accomplish things. Okay, here we go. Agentic workflow in AI refers to a sophisticated approach to designing AI systems capable of autonomously pursuing complex goals and workflows with minimal uh, human supervision. This concept signifies a, a shift from traditional AI applications, which typically augment specific repetitive tasks, basically you know, chatting, answering questions, stuff like that. Agentic AI systems are designed to understand complex instructions in natural language, making autonomous decisions, reason about subtasks, adapt their adaptions based on changing conditions, and fluidly move between tasks to efficiently process. So if you thought you were early to crypto, you're even earlier to AI. We don't even have like real agents yet. And I say that having already pictured a vision of the future where all these things are commonplace. So Again, with GPT, what happens? I ask it a question, it gives me an answer, right? I ask it to write code, it writes me some code. I ask it to do, you know, analyze this research paper, analyze research paper. Now, perplexity, same thing. Uh, it may give me links, it give me, ask me other stuff. I can ask it, um, <clears throat> why can't you be, uh, why, why can't you be an agent in AI? Let's see what it says. I can be Max, and I will show you how. That'd be that'd be cool. I would like that. So again, perplexity is just a a UI with a bunch of infrastructure, from what I understand it, around using different uh, engines such as GPT, uh, GPT three five, GPT four. It uses uh, Claude engines and stuff like that too. Claude is another AI tool. Man, perplexity is slow. To, or it must be my. Must be me. I'm sure it's not perplexity. Let me refresh. Okay, it already gave it. So the limitation danger associated with AI technology because expert systems. So this is like, ah, oh, ethical concerns. Basically can't do it. Okay, I get it. Thanks for telling me all the risks. Now, what can do it? Agent GPT rework D dot AI. It's in the chat. Highly recommend you check it out. You can do a free um, five, five runs. So it uses GPT 3.5's engine. Um, I think you can use GPT-4 if you do the premium, if you subscribe. I think, it, again, it's like one of those 20 or 40 bucks a month deals. But if you sign up, you can do five free limited runs, but it's pretty cool. So again, instead of asking a question to GPT or perplexity or otherwise, you create, you, you execute a, on a goal. You tell it, here's the things I want to do. And it will come up with the different tasks it needs to do to complete that list. So GPT, you need to tell it like, hey, if it can, you know, it'll figure out how to do certain stuff. But if you want to do it done a certain way, you need to tell it specifically what you want it to do. And it'll tell you if you can do it or not, if it has a problem or if it needs to change or whatever. With agents, you give it a goal. Now, think about it like the idea. Again, this is going to change. It's not going to be relevant. It's going to be different in months and in years from now, obviously. But you give it a goal. So, for example, um, let's give it a goal. Let's name it. Um, let's see. Hmm. 
let's name it tell me, let's just name it PulseX. <clears throat> let's do hex. Today's a hex day. Let's do that. <clears throat> and we're going to say, tell me everything you know about hex. Again, this is a limited hex crypto. This is a limited uh, version. Even the goal, I'm kind of like still telling it things. I mean, I guess you could say goal is produce deliverable with everything you can find about Hexcrow. So this can be more limited because it can only do a certain number of loops, they call it. Loops is like it goes through one task and like how many times can it go down a rabbit hole sort of thing? Think about it like that. Anyways, let's, let's, let's try it out. Thinking, I really like this interface. It's pretty cool. So right here, it came up with task added. I'm just going to pause it real quick just so we can look at it because it'll just keep going real fast. So if we scroll up, embarking on a new goal, produce deliverable with everything you find about Hex Crypto. Task added, research the history, purpose, features of Hex Crypto. Uh, task added, gather information about the current market value and trading volume. Uh, another task, find and analyze expert opinions, reviews, news articles. Another task, compile and organize all gathered information to a comprehensive deliverable about it. So again, instead of you telling it to do things, you just tell it what you want, what the end result should look like, and it'll figure out how to do it with different tasks, just as a person would do, right? If I were trying to find out everything about Hex, that's this is what I would do. This is a great list. This is, you know, if you're, if you're studying critical thinking or like you're a teacher doing critical thinking with kids in school, which you yeah, should do a lot more of, I guess, but... Um, this is what you would want them to come up with. If you tell them, okay, at the end of it, I want you to have this portfolio on this cryptocurrency. You would want them to be like, well, here's all the ways to find it. I would say, great job. That's a great job. That's, that's what a human would do. So literally, not only are you, is GPT replacing humans for answers or search engines for answers and stuff like that, you can replace entire teams of people who specialize in different things with agents. Agents can be, you can literally have your own virtual software development team. In the future, I could see us being, when I say future, I mean like months from now or like maybe a couple years, like very, very soon future. You, you could, you'll hire like, you know, companies will start hiring one developer and just power them up with AI. They'll have one subscription to all the AI services and they will be like literally like five or 10 developers. Or you'll hire a dev team to do a project, but maybe the dev team, you could choose like a virtual or a real person and you'll pay much more for the real person, but you can have the virtual, which you can do 80% of what you want to do, or, you know, a good job instead of a great job, stuff like that. This is obvious. This is, you know, that's uh, so what I'm saying. Like the, we already have some super early versions of how this stuff is going to fit together. It's just, it's very practical. It's very obvious. We just need a lot of compute power. Talked about before compute and data are the currency of this revolution. Compute and data. Need a lot of compute to run the models and the infrastructure and stuff. Need a lot of data to train it on. Data and compute. Do not forget that. That will give you a, you've already you've already got a head start above so many other people for understanding like what what the currency is, what's gonna be valuable in the future, what you're gonna need to to get in order to uh, again keep your edge or maintain an edge or have an edge with this stuff. So start all the tests. <clears throat> I first saw this, I was blown away. I'm like, wow, this is first of all, it makes so much sense. It's not it feels like magic, but it, as a you know tech person, it's like, yeah, of course, this is how it should work, assuming we have everything in place. So let's see how it does. Let's see what see what it does. So it's going searching the web. It'll it'll do all this stuff and hit continue, and we'll just look and see. Is it's referencing all these articles, Investopedia, Yahoo Finance, Medium articles, Coin Telegraph. Another, I'm sure they do a lot of great articles on on our stuff too, <laughs> or not. Uh, Hex.com, gathering all the stuff, thinking. Again, it's trying to figure out the best path to go down to do all this stuff. Say hi to the chat real quick. Red Squirrel, number one. Number one's happening, man. Crypto Toad 83, appreciate sauce. Appreciate you joining me, man. Hopefully you're getting some uh, good information out here. Yeah, so as you can see, this is the this is if you don't have if you have a free account, it limits everything. It only went to five loops. Um, 
So now it's like, it can only do like, a, like maybe let's just imagine like five things. It can only do like five things with, if you have the premium version, it can do, I think like 40, something like that, which so you can really go deep on all this, all this stuff. I gave it a big pass, but again, would that take a minute? Did it run for a one minute, like in total? And it did all these things, put all this information together. And then if I click summarize, it will tell me. It did all the research on Hex Crypto, gives me an overview, tells me, you know, quotes me different uh, market, you know, the market cap, totes me different, looks like trading volume and stuff. Uh, it gives me references, it cites sources. Uh, it tells me, it gives me a conclusion. Um, it basically did this research project that you would pay someone to do, or it would take your, you know, yourself to do maybe an hour, two hours, whatever. It did it in a minute using just a bunch of different threads. Instead of answering a question, you see the difference? If I, if I ask the question, which I, even if I ask chat GPT, like what is hex crypto? Or actually let me get the same exact thing. And maybe that'll be useful. I'm just going to literally give it the same sentence and see what it says. It's going to kind of convert into the question it, you know, to ask anyways. And this is the pro version too. This is not the, this is the paid version. Oh, let me refresh. I'll just start a new chat. If it goes through and I'll ask perplexity the same thing, new thread. And this is the pro version of perplexity. So this is the, uh, this is the free version of agent GPT compared against the pro version of both uh, perplexity and chat GPT. So what aspects would you, so I'm just going to skip, I'm just going to let it, I'm not going to give any more information. Just do that. It'll probably do a, a decent job. So it cites a few sources here and it's basically just pulling and summarizing data from uh, this answer. It didn't start a bunch of different tasks. It didn't go, it didn't do like this, like really thorough research. It just kind of, Hey, here's some sources. Uh, it pulled from them. It summarized it. And yeah, you don't see the numbers in here. It didn't go and like, look at, look up the numbers. Not yet. Um, you know, it's got the, you know, criticisms and stuff in here too. So while we're doing that, come on GPT. Let me refresh. I'm sure it's just, it's not you GPT, it's me. We're, we're at least gonna compare it against perplexity. We'll see that. They should give pretty similar answers. Actually, perplexity should give much better answers because it's actually using the web to search for information which ChatGPT might not, or it may do it in a very limited way. Perplexity is actually better at these kinds of things than ChatGPT would be. So uh, we'll just call it, okay. If you're gonna cooperate, I'll ask you. Uh, yeah. Anyways, so you can see the difference. Like this is, I mean, this is still perfectly fine information. Did it in, you know, 30 seconds, a minute too, but it doesn't have nearly like the research and the numbers and the sources and the, you know, you can go through it. It can tell you if you do. So that's just the summary. But if you scroll up, it'll tell you each piece of what it got from it, uh, what it does. And th again, this is stopping after like five, uh, five loops. So if you do the pro version, do like 40. So it'd be much, much more detailed and produce a lot more stuff. So when I was training, I was training the, uh, one sec, let me go to, I actually was, I used GPT to train. Sick. To train. Uh, I used agent GPT to do the research and produce all I could find on PulseX in order to train a custom GPT on chat GPT in order to be my, my one-on-one bot, my answer all my questions bot. And for some reason, yeah, I'm not pulling up the, the link right now, but let me just from Yay, we're live. Let's see. So this is day four. Three. Second one. Yeah, this one. One second, put this in the chat.
Okay. So I used it for this one. So I'll put this in the chat as well. I'll put that, put that on my doc, but put this in the chat. So this is, I trained it and was showing it going through in five to 10 minutes. It went through and did like a whole, you know, whole deliverable on Pulse X, all this information, all these different examples and how it works and all this stuff. And I trained a custom GPT in order to answer questions on it because it doesn't know that much about information about it. But if you train it on it and you give it the information, now it can answer questions about whatever you give it. So that's really powerful. I've talked about that in the previously this week as well. So that was pretty cool. That piece. And then let's see. So that's one piece of the agent. What else? Uh, you guys want to give me some ideas? So this has a thread of all the stuff you're working on. Uh, let's see. I want to give it. I'm trying to think what else is interesting. I thought I had some ideas written down, but let me see. Uh, you could ask it. I think you can ask it to give you. Uh, one, yeah, one cool thing is table. So uh, let's do Dex table. And again, if you do the, this is only going to a few loops. So the premium version will do a better job. Give me top table of top 10 Dex and features. So this is another good thing for research. And this is stuff, again, you would, you would do it yourself, but you don't have to do it yourself. You have, you have agents to do it like this. So this, again, going through all the stuff, creating all the tasks, and right there, look at that. Now, some of these is Bancor a decentralized liquidity pool? I think maybe, maybe it is. Okay. I haven't heard Bancor for a long time. So it's going through, it created a table and started filling in the features, started talking about that. You can use that for different like comparisons with PulseX and all this stuff too. And then it's going through more tables. It's, it's listing trading volume, supported cryptocurrencies. This is really good for research. Like right now, the best thing I've been using this for is research for different crypto stuff and comparisons and infographics, so like different data sources to get from that I, so I'm basically saving time myself. And then, yes, yeah, so it's putting all together more tables. And then at the end, yeah, it's even writing code. It'll be, if it has to write code to do something, it'll write the code. It'll show you the code. It'll, I think it'll run the code. Yeah. It'll like run the code and then try to figure out the features. Yeah. Uniswap, you shoot up one inch. Uh, BISC. Yeah. I mean, some of these, again, it's not going to get everything perfectly correct, but it's going to give you, it's going to do, think of it as like it's going to do 89% of the research for you. And then you can just go through and not clean it up a little bit or, oh, you know, swap something out or, or otherwise. So you hit the max loops again. You can do much more with premium version. You hit summarize. And it's going to take all that stuff. And let's see if it puts it in. Yeah, it should put it in a nice table with the different features, indexes. And this doesn't look like it looks like it had an error creating the table. <laughs> yeah. It tried to make a table. Only thing I don't like about this one is I don't think, let's see, correct. Let's see. Um, yeah. Produce a table. Let's see if it'll do it. Okay. Yeah, I guess you can. I know it's kind of hard to give it feedback and tell it to do something. So in this case, okay, cool. You can actually say, hey, you messed up. Like this is supposed to look like a table. Now it looks like a table. So I just did all this research with the references for you. Let's see. Yeah, y'all have any suggestions for examples? I'm trying to think of what else would be interesting to do. Sorry, I'm a little, I'm a little fried today as far as like streaming goes. <laughs> Uh, I want to give you a couple more examples though, because I think it's a super useful tool. Again, agent GPT dot rework with D dot AI. Let's see. RTM asking, how can you catch that one to a million? I uh, did a stream. Go to go real DeFi. I said that in the chat. Go real And if you click on money, 
there are streams of different ways to make money in crypto, how to exit crypto, mad gains and stuff like that. So go to Go Real DeFi, click on the money tab on the right, right side under learn to earn. And they'll give you a lot of information on that. Okay, let's do, um, yeah, what else? So they also have this thing about uh, interest in AI agents to scale up your web scraping. So this is really good. This is what I thought with this would be cool with web scraping is essentially the way I think about Asian GPT in this current form. I'm sure it'll be like to have different features and stuff later on. But right now it's super good at research. So scraping the web, putting the information for you and giving it to you. Even examples, create a competent report of Nike company, plan a detailed trip to Hawaii, uh, create a study plan for history 101 exam. So it's basically really good for research. So how do we use that for crypto? Again, we can learn about the cryptos. We can get stats and metrics and stuff like that. Um, let's see. Make the case for pulse chain overtaking Ethereum. Ha <laughs> ha. Sounds like a fun one, right? Let's name it pulse chain number one. Or number two, whatever it was. If, if Ethereum flipped Bitcoin, I guess we're I guess we're going number one, right? What's up, Hexy McHexkin? Always a fun name. So let's do the research, see what it comes up with. So I'm gonna go for another probably five or ten minutes. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to get them in. So the, again, this is taking our goal, breaking it into different tasks, executing the tasks, writing code, researching, web scraping, whatever it needs to do, and then putting it together if we want a summary. And all in about, what, about a minute or so? Usually it takes for this, it's the free version, yeah, it takes about like 30 seconds to a minute. The premium version will take longer, but it does a much deeper research. So it could take five to 10 minutes. So we click summarize. Sub vets. Let's see. So yeah, this is basically making the case for Pulse Chain uh, taking over Ethereum. So scalability. I, I mean, we get whatever stuff they get. We can fork and whatever, or we can yeah, we can fork, but we can um, implement whatever new EIPs uh, they do on this chain. Transaction fees. I mean, obviously. Uh, it talks about that, how it's better for transaction fees. That's the only two things it comes up with. I think if you had the premium version, I mean, I, I, I do on another device. If I said this again, it would come up with like much more data on like making making the case for that. So yeah, this is just one thing. really good for research, really good for like putting stuff together. And then let's see. I think I, I like to use things to teach too. So for example, uh, give me top five DeFi strategies. Again, this is stuff that could take you hours to research. Oh, that's the name. That is the goal. And the name is DeFi strategies. We'll do this one more and then we'll, we'll wrap up. All these tasks, research different platforms, compare the features, benefits, document, you know, provide a list. It's going through doing the research. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. And again, if you want to understand like agentic workflows and agents and stuff even more, there's two videos I recommend. So this one, this guy's, uh, this guy's pretty good. Matthew uh, Berman, I've been watching a lot of his videos. He, so he basically is breaking down a video from Andrew and then one from Andrew actually giving a talk. Both of them are like 10 minutes long, 20 minutes long. So both worth watching and it really breaks it down in a simple way too. So you can be like, oh, that makes sense or something like that. So almost finished here. And we click summarize. The LP number one, staking number two, yield farming number three, lending and, lending and borrowing number four, and AMM pools. So 
between these pools. So, I mean, what's, what's the difference in the provision? Yeah. Now I'm like, okay, give me these two. Did it just get confused or is there some big difference? So I'll go over to GPT and be like, tell me the difference between liquidity provisioning and it just said AMM. AMM pulls. And then I'll give it context based on these statements. Or are they the same? I'll paste in the first, uh, I'll paste in the liquidity revision, then I'll paste in the AMM pools. Let's see what GPT says. Yeah, while both uh, involve providing liquidity to DEXs, they're not exactly the same. Let's bring down key differences. So liquidity provision, provisioning, pools, supplying funds to a liquidity pool and decentralized changes and specific types of liquidity pools used by DEX as they employ algorithmic straight determined strategies. Okay, users can participate in AMM boss by writing liquidity contracts assets supporting and fees. That's what I'm saying. Are, are they, is there like some special AMM thing you can participate in? Um, they both sound like they're talking about the same thing. AM pools. What are AM pools? So now I'm going to go to perplexity. Here you go. I'm using all three. What are AM pools? <laughs> Different terminary quotes every day. I'm looking forward to one tomorrow fast. <laughs> the mission is to protect you. And then the, the, the boy is like, I order you not to protect me. Something like that. Remember that. Turtles, people should know this. Well, that's good work. Appreciate that, man. Copilot uses GPT-4 for free. Is Copilot free? Sounds like it probably is then. Nice. Oh, it's not really free. You got to be logged in with Microsoft account. That's, and that's free. Yeah, so free, but you got an account. So it requires an account. Yeah, you know, but a lot of people, I don't use Copilot when I'm coding these days. I'm not, again, I'm not a dev. I do write code, but I'm not, I'm literally writing some code right now some, for a project I'm working on that I'll talk about a little bit later on. If all goes well. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't use, I use an IDE to write code, but I don't, maybe I should use Copilot. I, I, mean, I just feel like I like using GPT and going back and forth, but maybe Copilot has some advantages. I don't know. Maybe I'll try it. I just haven't needed to use Copilot yet, I guess is the question, but I do have written a lot of code with AI. I just haven't, I don't know. So, and pulls the financial components into the exit if so, we're trading back to that trust mark meters. So, liquidity pools are good values. We pull essentially collection of funds like smart contract. Yeah, I don't, I don't see the difference here. Amen's provide liquidity at all times. They're, they're just difference in AMM pools and liquidity pools. Closely related. Yeah, the same thing. We refer to different aspects of automated trading mechanism. And the same distinction requires both. Yeah, I know what AMMs are. I know what liquidity pools are. Is there some different type of participation I can do with AMMs versus providing liquidity? That's why that's what I'm missing. Overall mechanism or system that enables, maybe they're just talking about that. They're talking about the system. LP pools are just the primary thing to participate. Is there another thing to participate in? So is there something a user can participate in with AMM pools other than liquidity pools. Okay, so sure. <laughs> yeah, I know you can use AMMs for trading. I know you can use it for yield farming. I know you can use it for governance stuff. Uh, 
as well in staking. Okay. Sorry, I just went down this rabbit hole of like, there was nothing new I learned here. It was just like, I just kept getting confused. Like, why are they called AMM pools? That sounds like liquidity pools to me. And AMMs provide a bunch of different functions. Liquidity pools are one of them. Yeah, I get all that. I just thought, I was like, am I missing something here? There's a rabbit hole. There you go. I just went. I used three different products to go down and, fi and finally come to the conclusion that there's nothing new that I need to learn uh, here as far as I'm at. In the comments, if I miss something, let me know in the chat or comments. But I feel like, uh, yeah, I, I, I get it now. Not much. Uh, didn't learn anything. What's up? I custom dated. Uh, pull text question, trying to swap, ask, confirm, swap. There's nowhere to confirm. What changed? There's nowhere to confirm. You say like the confirm button is grayed out. You can't click it on PulseX, confirm swap. It's nowhere to confirm. I'm not sure what nowhere to confirm means. If it's grayed out or not there, maybe I would just try to refresh and try again. Sometimes MetaMask and you know, like your wallet and the DAP and stuff get stuff to get wonky in the browser sometimes. So maybe just, uh, it sounds like just something on the browser side where, um, or the network connection side that's being, it's not keeping up with loading data or something. Yeah, I'm not sure. So anyways, agents, they're going to be big, 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 big in the future. I have a feeling it's just only natural. And um, if you want to know why, rewind, because I talked about it uh, quite, quite. <clears throat> Damn it. I just realized I saw I saw sound and I'm like, all right, I don't know what that means. Okay, let me let me rephrase. I'll be doing tomorrow, come back tomorrow. Leave me, I don't know where I stopped, but leave me a comment uh, on the video of if you're interested, if you have an idea and want to do it with AI, but you're not sure what to do, leave me a comment. I might be able to cover it tomorrow during the AMA. Come tomorrow, ask questions. Tomorrow's the last day. So it's the last time to do AMA for as far as this stuff goes for the training and the, the streams and stuff go. That'll be tomorrow morning, probably around uh, 2, well, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, somewhere around there. And then I'll be on talking AI with Crypto Coffee, if all goes well, around 5 o'clock or around 4 o'clock Eastern. So 1 o'clock in the afternoon, 4 o'clock Eastern as well. So double stream tomorrow as well. I may take a break. I'm saying this now. I may take a break this weekend. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, or be, you know, definitely we'll stream less this weekend. Uh, just, just, yeah, a lot, uh, a lot of cool content. But um, also, there's some like there's like projects I actually want to work on too. So I need like time to code. I need time to like do stuff too. Um, anyways, and then uh, I had already had a community question, and I said I'd get it to it today, but actually I'll get to it tomorrow because that's that's easier. I'll keep it during the AMA. But uh, anyways. Thank you all for uh, joining me. Again, day five, wrapping up AI and crypto week tomorrow. Talk about different tokens ideals and some Pulse Chain projects. What makes sense as far as tokens go and platforms and stuff like that. Um, yeah, Sci Vibe and 5555. Five, five, five. We are out. <laughs>